Hey everyone, thanks for taking the time to watch this uh, important video. I'm just going to come right out and say it. Uh, Babylon is the eschatological city of Jerusalem. That is to say, Jerusalem in the end times. But before I go any further, I want to make an outline of what this video will cover so you can know what to expect. In this video, we will use no extra biblical content. That is to say, content other than that contained in the Bible. In other words, we will be allowing the Bible itself to reveal to us who Babylon is. I believe the Bible interprets itself and therefore needs no outside extra biblical information. The Bible itself will in fact unravel this mystery and in this video we will allow it to do so. We will also towards the end of this video work through some biblical passages which some say makes it impossible for Jerusalem to be Babylon. Okay, so let's first look at some context for the overall book of Revelation. The book of Revelation covers many things, from the letters to the seven churches around in John's day, to the seven years of trouble upon the earth, to the 1,000 year millennium and beyond. What we are interested in here is those seven years of trouble, because those are the years that Babylon becomes active and is then destroyed. Daniel gives us a great overview of what those seven years are about. In Daniel 9.24 it says, Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. Take careful note what the verse said. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. So Daniel is saying that there is seventy weeks that focus upon Israel and Jerusalem. Now I'm not saying Revelation is exclusively speaking about Israel and Jerusalem because it's not. But the overall focus is, and Daniel's perspective is, and his perspective is contained within the events of the book of Revelation. If you do not know much about Daniel's 70 weeks, then don't worry. You will still be able to follow along. But just be aware that the weeks are not made up of days, but years. The 70th week is seven years. And this is where all the commentators get the information needed to determine that what is called the tribulation period is indeed seven years long. 69 weeks have already been fulfilled and there is one final week left to go which is the 70th week and that is the so-called tribulation period which the, the book of Revelation covers in detail. So 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and thy holy city. Daniel then says in verse 27 and he, Antichrist, shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. This is the 70th week. And in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even unto the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So that 70th week spoken of there is the week that Revelation mainly focuses on. The seals, the trumpets, the vials, Babylon, wars, rapture, the second coming, and the Antichrist, etc., are all contained within the 70th week. This week is said by Daniel there to be started by the confirmation of a covenant with Israel and many, but broken midpoint. But even more important in this verse, it says in verse 27, And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even unto the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Okay, so Daniel just said that because Jerusalem and Israel as a whole were overspreading abominations, that the Lord will allow Antichrist to desolate that which Christ left already desolate, and to desolate it in, a, in such a way that it will cease to exist. Let's look closely at the verse. And for the overspreading of abominations, there's our reason for the desolation, he shall make it desolate, he being the Antichrist, shall desolate the place, even unto the consummation. So there's our destruction. The word for consummation in Strong's Concordance is kala, which means completion, termination, full end, complete destruction, consummation, annihilation. Who is this destruction to come upon? It's, it's Jerusalem and its people. Because remember, the context here is about Thy people and thy holy city. This is pretty shocking news to some, so please bear with me. In verse 26 it says, And the people of the prince that shall come, 
shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. We just saw in verse 26 of Daniel 11 that the city will be destroyed. The city was indeed destroyed in 70 AD after Jesus proclaimed it would be. However, that was just the beginning. As verse 27 says, he shall pour out desolation on the desolated. It also says, and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. That prince is Antichrist. Jesus said, Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till you say, Blessed is he which cometh in the name of the Lord. Matt 23, 38-39 So what Jesus said was, The beginnings of desolations were started by the Romans destroying Jerusalem, and it does not end until Israel declares Jesus is the Christ. And they do not do that until the day of the Lord. In fact, the verse says that the city will continue to be desolated, and it won't end until there is a flood. And it says so right there in verse 26. Shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood. We see this flood uh, midpoint of the week in Revelation 12, 15 to 16. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried, carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. This woman spoken of is Israel, and this is the beginning of the end for Jerusalem. From this point on it is under siege for 42 months, it says in Revelation 11.2, and then it is finally destroyed. In Revelation 11.2 it says, And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. The Antichrist is the one who makes this end time desolation of Jerusalem. Still in Daniel 9 verse 27 it says, And he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate, even unto the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So we see that there will indeed be huge desolation poured out upon both Israel and the holy city in the day of the Lord. Note that verse 27 says that Antichrist sits in Jerusalem city pouring out desolation. Indeed, he does in fact live in Jerusalem. In Daniel 11:45, And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas in the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. I believe this is what causes the final tipping point to cause our Lord to destroy Jerusalem. You see, he sits there as their Messiah. In John 5:43, Jesus says, I come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. So Jesus is saying that while they will reject him as a Messiah, they won't reject the Antichrist as Messiah when he comes. So what I'm suggesting to you is that Israel is the primary focus of the seven years spoken of by Daniel. As the 70th week is speaking of Israel and Jerusalem, specifically and no other group, it is safe to say that we would expect Jerusalem and Israel to be playing a large part in the book of Revelation, and indeed it does. Are you getting a picture now of the times and the seasons of these eschatological days? So that's enough context for now. But before we move on, I think that we should note that I am not anti-Semitic, nor should people use uh, this video's content to be anti-Semitic. I think that uh, I'm bringing a balance here. I think that pro-Israel camp has gone way over the top, and, and I used to be one of them. Uh, because it seems that they all think that Israel can do no wrong in God's sight and that he will always fight their wars and protect them. I think Matthew 23, 37-39 sums up the mind of the Lord on this issue a little bit more accurately. It says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, for I say unto you, Ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. So here Jesus is saying that he would protect Israel under his wing, but they refused, and they still refuse. 
and as a result, he says that he shall leave the house of Israel desolate, which he did, and that means destroyed. It's been destroyed for 2,000 years now, and only in 1948 has it come back. As a result, he says he shall leave the house of Israel desolate, meaning destroyed. This is still the case as Jesus continues saying that they will not see him until they say, Blessed is Jesus. And they have not done that. God's heart is for his people, but he is also righteous and holy and will reward sin and has done so with Israel and will continue to do so, especially when the abomination of desolation is found in Jerusalem. Okay, moving on. Let's now see why Jerusalem is Babylon, directly from the word. But to work this out, we need to first see what Babylon is not. Babylon is not the beast that she rides upon. That beast is made up of kings. Revelation 17, 9-10 And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are the seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is. And the other is not yet come, and when he cometh, he must continue a short space. So the beast is made up of kings, which we will not address in this study as they are not instrumental on revealing who Babylon is. I will, however, point out that the mountains spoken of are not literal mountains at all. Mountains are sometimes referred to as kings or kingdoms or peoples, such as in Jeremiah 51, 24 to 25. And I will render unto Babylon and to the inhabitants of Chaldea all that evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, saith the Lord. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord. So here we see that a mountain is not always a literal mountain in the word. Most other English translations say, instead of saying, and there are seven kings, they say, and they are also seven kings. This is clearly the correct translation. If the mountains were kings and literal mountains at the same time, as some say, to justify their favourite candidate for Babylon, then that would require one of those mountains to die from a mortal head wound and then be resurrected back to life, as this is what happens to one of the kings that the woman rides. Clearly this cannot happen, so we are not talking about literal mountains. However, if you still choose to believe that they are, then you should also be aware that Jerusalem also sits on seven mountains and not hills. Now these mountains are, and please forgive my pronunciations, 1. Mount Zion, 2. Mount Ophel, 3. Mount Moriah, 4. Mount Bezetha, 5. Mount Acre, 6. Mount Garab, and 7. Mount Goeth. But like I said, the Bible is not referring to literal mountains. So in continuing, we will just focus on the woman that rides these kings, for the woman is the one that has the name written on her forehead. Revelation 17.5, and upon her forehead with a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So the woman is not the beast, but it is the woman. Another reason the woman and the beast are separate entities and not one and the same is found in verse 16. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, they shall hate the whore and make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Also speaking of Jer uh, Jerusalem, Jeremiah 4.30 says, Thy lovers will despise thee, they will seek thy life. So clearly these kings hate the whore, or the woman, the one with the name written on her forehead. We've already seen in Daniel 9.27 that Antichrist shall desolate Israel and the holy city, even unto its utter destruction. This hatred and burning with fire matches up quite well, especially in light that one of those kings she writes is the Antichrist, so obviously Babylon cannot hate itself, nor make war or destroy itself. So Babylon is not the beast. Only the woman is Babylon. One last thing that Babylon is not, and that is, it is not a mystery. The fact that she has a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, Mother of Harlots and Abominations of the Earth, does not mean that it's a mystery to all. It is a mystery only to the unsaved, the Jews, and to those who do not have an ear to hear and eyes to see. For the angel speaking to John said in Revelation 17:7, 7, he says to John, I will tell thee the mystery of the woman. 
So clearly the angel unraveled this mystery and revealed it to John, who revealed it to us, who the woman, Babylon, is. So now that we have established what Babylon is not, let's establish, according to the angel, what Babylon is. Just after the angel told John that he would reveal the woman to him, the angel says in Revelation 17, 8, And the woman which thou sawest is that great city. So there you have it. It's a city. Mystery revealed by the angel to John and thus us. But this verse reveals much more if you had have been listening to John in previous chapters. You would know which city he was referring to as it's not just any city, it's that great city, the angel says. The angel expects John to know exactly what city he is talking about when he uses the term that, as in that great city. One famous example I can use to show how this analogy works is with Bill Clinton. And please forgive the slightly smutty aspect of this example, but I can't think of a clearer and more well-known example than this one. Being accused of extramarital affairs, Bill Clinton said, I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Was anyone in doubt about who Bill Clinton was referring to? He did add afterwards her actual name, but the use of the words that woman caused everyone to know beforehand who he was referring to, because we all had prior knowledge of the allegation. If Bill had not known that we had all known about Monica Lewinsky, he would not have used the term that woman because that would have invoked a question instead of a statement. The media understood this and in showing Mr Clinton on film stating this, they often left off the after mentioned name of that woman, assuming that we all knew who he was speaking of. And we did. So likewise the angel expected that John knew what city he was referring to by saying to John, that great city. John did indeed know what city was the great city because the angel had already told John in Revelation 11.8 where he said to John, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. The angel speaking to John about these two witnesses and the manner of death that shall befall them said that they would be killed in the great city. The angel identified this great city as being the same city that our Lord was crucified in. It's common knowledge that our Lord is Jesus Christ and that he was crucified in Jerusalem. Therefore, the angel was giving Jerusalem the title of the great city. It's not terribly difficult to work out that when the angel again refers to that great city, when speaking of the woman, Babylon, he is in fact making a clear reference to Jerusalem. There is one more reference to Jerusalem, being that great city, in Revelation 16 19. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God, to give unto her a cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. What is being said here is that Jerusalem has suffered some de devastation, uh, as devastation is what's coming to Babylon. The Lord is reminded of what he shall do to Jerusalem. Many folks over the years have come up with uh, many ideas of what Babylon is, many totally disregarding the fact that the angel clearly stated that he would tell John what the mystery of the woman was. I'm not going to address these ideas or try to disprove them. What I will do is just show that Babylon is exactly what the Bible says it is and that it is a city. I will let the truth take care of the error. Nine times the book of Revelation says that Babylon is a city. And here are those references. Revelation 14, 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Twice in Revelation 18.10, it is called a city, saying, standing afar off for fear of her torment, saying, alas, alas, that great city, Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. Revelation 18.16, and saying, alas, alas, that great city, 
that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. Again, twice in Revelation 18 and 18, it says, it's a city, saying, And they cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? Revelation 18 19 Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour she is made desolate. Revelation 18.21 Thus with violence shall that great city, Babylon, be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. The term great city is used nowhere else in the New Testament, only in Revelation. Thus, in discovering the meanings of a text, we must keep with the running theme of the book and not deviate from it. In the Greek, the term translate as exactly that, the great city and nothing more than that. According to Strong's Concordance, these words translate to English very well. Great, Greek word megas, translates as great, large in size, much, numerous, grown up, adult, vehement, Intense, important, of high importance. City, Greek word polis, means a city, an enclosed and walled town, the inhabitants of a city, the city of anyone, the city of one's birth or residence. So clearly these words refer to nothing else but a great city. There is one more reference to the great city, and this time it refers to the New Jerusalem. Well, this city is not Babylon, as this city appears long after Babylon is done away with. It does keep with the running theme that Jerusalem, no matter which one it is, is always referred to as that great city in the book of Revelation, or the great city. Revelation 21.10 and he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. The Old, the Old Testament even calls Jerusalem a great city. Jeremiah 22, 5-8 But if ye will not hear these words, I swear by myself, saith the Lord, that this house shall become a desolation. For thus saith the Lord unto the king's house of Judah, that are Gilead to me, and to the head of Lebanon. Yet surely I will make thee a wilderness, and cities which are not inhabited. And I will prepare destroyers against thee, every one with weapons, and they shall cut down thy choice cedars, and cast them into the fire. And many nations shall pass by this city, and they shall say every man to his neighbour, Wherefore hath the Lord done this unto this great city? So one last point on the fact that uh, Babylon is nothing but a literal city. It says in Revelation 17, 21 to 23, it says, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers, and musicians, and pipers, and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman of whatever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. If Babylon is not a literal city, then why is there musicians? craftsmen, the light of candles, brides, bridegrooms, merchants, contained within the woman who is Babylon. Okay, so I hope now that we've established without doubt that uh, the woman who is Babylon is a city. And we have also seen some evidence that that city is Jerusalem. So moving on, the woman is drunken with eschatological saints' blood. That is to say that the woman is drunken with end time saints' blood, not present tense or past tense. Revelation 17.6 And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of saints and with the blood of martyrs of Jesus. Here John saw the woman drunken in his present tense, not past tense or future tense. 
However, it is our future tense, as Babylon is an eschatological city, meaning it is active only during the 70th week. John was taken in the spirit to see the woman in Revelation 17.1. And there came out one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. And then in verse 6 it says, and I saw the woman, drunken with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. So John was shown the woman clearly in the future, as Babylon was not around in John's day. And he saw the woman, drunken, John's present tense. This nullifies the idea that Babylon has been around and active since John's day. And, and two that any saints killed by her were past tense of the 70th week, as she was clearly actively killing the saints or had just freshly killed the saints as she was still drunken with their blood as John was observing her. These saints the woman is drunken with are actually still alive in the fourth seal and are actually killed in the fifth seal, Revelation 6, 9-10. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? These fifth seal saints ask God, How long will he hold off avenging their blood? And they are told to wait a little while longer, verse 11. But we, but we see the Lord judge the woman and avenge their blood in Revelation 19 too. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. This is another great example of scripture interpreting scripture. This